A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive, part 21. Removing the paint and cleaning the large globe valve turret isolator with a rotary wire brush, then fitting it to the modified steam turret. Making a drain pipe for the blowdown valve and looking at the fusible plug inside the firebox. Trying to remove the baked on paint from this globe valve that was once fitted to my traction engine was a bit of a fail. The idea of using cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner to dissolve the paint didn't work, it was too well baked on. Yesterday I drove down to Boston, and that's Boston in Lincolnshire, England, not Boston, Massachusetts. And I bought several Stuart engines which will feature in videos very shortly. The man from whom I bought the engines was into restoring motorcycles and we had quite a long chat about heat-resistant paints and baking on of paint. OK, I suppose I could use Nitromore's paint remover on this thing, but I don't like it, it's horrible stuff to use. I much prefer to put the painted item into a tub of cellulose thinners, leave it overnight and then the paint falls off, but not in this case. It's time to get physical with a hands-on approach and a rotary wire brush. This is a Proxon motor tool which in turn is fitted into a Proxon motor tool holder and that is permanently screwed to my workbench. Here it is fitted with a wire brush. And now it's top tip time. I've found a problem when using these wire brushes. When you use them they shed their bristles. And these stainless steel bristles fly off in all directions and usually stick in my t-shirt and then annoy me for the rest of the day. And even worse, in the winter I generally wear fleecy jackets in the workshop and the bristles are really difficult to remove from these jackets. So here's a solution. Use an old t-shirt and hold it in your hand near the wire brush and position it between the wire brush and yourself. That way the little bristles stick into the t-shirt that you're holding and not into your t-shirt that you're wearing. In no time at all, most of the paint's been removed. To be honest, I alternated between the wire brush and my polishing spindle in the outer part of the workshop. I find this type of wire brush to be better than the normal flat ones. You can really get into the corners with it. And also, this type of wire brush doesn't seem to shed quite as many bristles as the flat ones. When I was happy that I'd removed sufficient paint, I applied some Loctite 542. And no, I do not have a sponsorship deal with Loctite either. Please be aware that I like to buy the things that are showing the videos for the simple reason I can be honest. I'm going to do a test fit on the boiler itself, but first I'm just giving it a clean with a cloth, and here it is, screwed part way into the boiler. The globe valve fits very well into the base fitting, but I do need to shorten the thread of it so it goes further into the top part. All will be revealed in the fullness of time. This is the old pressure gauge that I'm not going to use. I'm just holding it in position to give you some idea of what it's going to look like. Here on the bench is the blowdown valve. I need to make a part for this because the previous one has disappeared. It's a piece of pipe that points the water downwards. This is a brand new standard blowdown valve, but it's not right for this application. When it's screwed into position on a boiler, the downward facing pipe is where the water comes out. But on the Sweet William boiler, I need to use this one, because the hole in the boiler where the blowdown valve fits is underneath. This hole is threaded 5 16 by 32 threads per inch, and here I'm making something to fit in it. First of all, I'm using a piece of 5 16 of an inch diameter brass, and I didn't need to centre drill this first because there was a hole already in the end. I just drilled it through 7 30 seconds of an inch and here using a tailstock die holder manually I'm threading the end of it. The thread of course is 5 16 by 32 threads per inch which should screw perfectly into the hole in the blowdown valve. To make the part look nice I'm using some wet to dry sandpaper and you will notice I'm pulling it upwards because it's only paper and it could tear and I would much prefer my hands to move away from the chuck than towards it as I need as many fingers as possible for forthcoming video projects. Here I'm parting off the piece of pipe. To fit this piece of pipe to the blowdown valve, or should I say to fit the blowdown valve to this piece of pipe, first of all I coat the thread in Loctite 542 as usual. Then with the piece of pipe firmly held in the chuck, 
I screw the blowdown valve onto the piece of pipe. This is a far better method than using a pair of pliers or grips. Here's the pipe in position. If I want to be ultra critical, I shouldn't have put quite as many threads on it, but it will be okay, it's underneath the boiler. Here's where the blowdown valve fits underneath the firebox, and the idea is when you finish steaming the engine, because it's a steel boiler, it needs blowing down. So you open the valve in the end, and all of the water comes out of the boiler and goes down the pipe that I've just made onto the ground. Directly above this area is the firebox, and you can see it clearly here. This thing that's screwed in the top of it is called a fusible plug. Because this fusible plug is in a tight space, you really can't see much detail. In fact, I phoned the owner of the engine who fitted the plug and said, is this a fusible plug or is it just a brass blanking plug? When he fitted this fusible plug, he bought two. Here are some photographs he sent of the other one. In this photograph, you can clearly see that there is a hole in this plug which is filled with metal that has a low melting point, normally lead or solder alloy. In case you're wondering what a fusible plug is and what it does, the principle is simple. If the water level drops below the crown of the boiler, it will get extremely hot. The firebox temperature in a full-size steam locomotive and even in a miniature steam locomotive is extremely high, and without the water behind the firebox crown, it doesn't last long. By fitting a fusible plug like this into the firebox crown, if it gets too hot, the lead will melt and all the water and steam will blow out and put out the fire. Yet another example of steam age ingenuity. A very simple yet clever idea. I mentioned in the last episode that this locomotive has steam operated drain cocks and I'll be showing them in detail later on in the series. This special valve admits and exhausts the steam from the drain cocks, and it will need piping to the rear of the turret. This is the original pipe that connected the valve to the turret. I'm going to change it for something a bit better looking. And that is it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.